Hey, welcome. I'm glad you all are here. I'm glad I get to be here with you to share the word this morning. Are you ready to hear the word? So the word of God is a lamp to my feet. It's a light uh, to my path. It shines where I'm at, but it also shines ahead to where I'm supposed to be. Aren't you, aren't you thankful for somebody um, when you're, maybe you're walking in the dark and they have the flashlight? You ever been in the woods with only one flashlight? I don't know if you know how to use a flashlight in the woods when you're the only one with the flashlight and you got three people with you. Um, you don't just use the flashlight like this for just your feet and keep walking. You kind of like shine it like this. You kind of give everybody an opportunity to see where they're at, but also where you're going. You got to kind of shine it back, right? You got to kind of shine it forward. And the Word of God is is like that. It shows us it shows us exactly where we're to go. It doesn't just he. It's like if you're walking in the woods and you're supposed to be going this way, it would be nice if they didn't shine the flashlight over here. That you don't need an answer over here, right? You don't need to know what's over there unless there's a, a mountain cougar or something like that. Uh, all right, praise the Lord. That's what the Word of God is. All right, so we're, we're in week two um, of, uh, of a series we're just calling Back to School. We're going back to school, uh, back to faith school. And this is a really, 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 uh, I believe, an important fund, uh, fundamental uh, time of teaching on faith. And why is faith so important? It's because it's your victory. It's because it's how you appropriate all of salvation. And, um, and, and yet at the same time, as much as we've heard uh, the word faith, sometimes it can be used like love, you know, like I love pizza and I love my wife, um, but they mean totally different things. And a lot of times what happens is, is there's just not much clarity around things that we talk about all the time. You know, we, we use those words and we just move on and there's this expectation that everyone just knows about what faith is. Right, and so um, I want to kick off this morning um, just a, just a moment um, of, of review. Last week we we talked about the textbook that we have that the Lord's given us, and that is the Bible. This is something that God has given to us, and we talked about the the just how how true it is. Not just uh, it's not just a history book. It's it's true. It's not it's not true like the like what you ate for breakfast this morning. It's true like the level or the line. It's what everything is based off. It is, it is foundational. And we just talked about how the Bible is God's word. This is God's word to me. This is God's word to me. This is, his word is alive and his word, this is his word written to me. The Holy Spirit is my teacher. When I open this book, the Holy Spirit is my teacher. How many of you kids went back to school this year, uh, and, and especially when they're younger, uh, they would talk about who their teacher is. Oh, I got this teacher, and, and she's so nice. And I'm, I remember one time one of our boys came home, and she goes, and, and they said, that, oh, and she's pretty. I got a pretty teacher. That's always nice, right? There's, they know the name of their teacher. You have a teacher. The Holy Spirit's your teacher. Every time you open the Word of God, He's there to teach you and me the Word. He's there to illuminate to us what we didn't see or couldn't see or didn't know we needed to hear. And that's who's here this morning. When, when the Word of God goes forth, He's going to talk to each and every one of us. Amen? And so um, I want to I kick off this morning in Hosea chapter 4 uh, as we enter in. Hosea chapter 4, uh, 1 through 6, you may have heard this. Uh, verse 6 says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. How many of you have ever heard that verse? Just show a hand. You've ever heard that. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And so uh, this is partly why we're teaching and we're going to school. How many of you know if your kids don't go to school, uh, they'll struggle in life because they don't know how to do some of the, nor the things that you would need, like reading, writing, arithmetic, right? Um, I don't even know that we use that, arithmetic, math, all right? Um, but <laughs> let's go back to verse 1 here and let's read the context of what's going on and the Lord is he's bringing some correction he said he, he said in verse 6 my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge but he says hear the word of the Lord O children of Israel for the Lord has controversy with the inhabitants of the land in other words they're there's they're 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 not they'll go in the way that God designed them to go did you know that that's happening even in our land there's there, we're not all going the way that God designed uh, or he desires or his heart or he says that they should go. He says, uh, there is no faithfulness or steadfast love, and there is no knowledge of God in the land. 
So th- that, that's the next verse. Let's keep on going. We'll see what happens. There's swearing. There's lying. There's murdering. There's stealing. There's committing of adultery. They, all, they, they break all bounds. In other words, they don't keep their word. Uh, uh, there's, no, there's no limits. Anything they think of, right? There's bloodshed. And bloodshed follows bloodshed. It's like an eye for an eye. Well, you did this to me, so I hurt you. Hurt me. I'm hurting you back. It's just one thing after next blow after blow. Next verse. Therefore, the land mourns. I mean, that's a that's a terrible place, isn't it? Just where just everything just looking out for number one. This is what it comes down to. It's looking out for number one. It's survival of the fittest, and anything that that that, that you got to do to do it. That's the way we're gonna do it, baby. And here it goes on. It says, the land mourns and all who dwell in it in languish. It's hard. That's a hard life. The Bible talks about how the way of a transgressor is hard. And so the land is hard. And the beasts, and also the beasts of the field and the birds of the heavens and even the fish of the sea are taken away. Uh, like even creation suffers when man is not going God's way. Have you ever seen a city that just is just not going God's way? And you can just see it. Like the, it's just... Things are just destroyed. Keep on going. Yet, let no one contend and let no one accuse, for with you is my contention, O priest. So here's what he says. He says, all this is going on in, in, the, in the land, and the people aren't walking with the Lord, and all this is, is hard and it's heavy, and, but guess what? Don't start, don't start assigning blame. He said, you don't, there's nothing, no one to contend in whose fault. He said, the Lord said, my contention or my, my, my contention, my bone to pick, uh, so to speak, is with you, priests, who are supposed to be carrying the word of God in this land. You know, the Bible tells us that we are priests, not just, not just the pastor, but we are priests. It's important that the word of God would be taught. In the church, but it's it's really equally, and I'd say even well, it's 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 the same level of importance that the word of God is brought. It's not just taught, but it's brought by you and me into our into our jobs. It's brought into our schools. It's brought into our business. In in the way that we do everything, the word of God is brought. That we are representatives of the Word of God. And this is why it's so important for us to teach uh, just simple faith. Because everyone has heard faith. But what is faith? He goes on to the next verse. It says this. He says, uh, you shall stumble by day. The prophet shall also stumble with you by night. And I will destroy your mother. He's like, he's saying, y'all, you're, 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 it's not good for you. It's not good for you, priest. Sometimes in the, in, the, in the land when everything was going bad, the, the priest kind of had like, well, we're with God. And the Lord's like, you're not with me. And it's about to get real bad for you. And he says, next verse, verse 6, and he says, my people are destroyed. This is what's going on because they don't know or for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge. How, 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 uh, how do you and I reject knowledge? We don't accept as true what we hear. And sometimes we can sit in, a, in, 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 in church or we can open our Bibles and we can be like, yeah, come on, 21st century here. Come on, bud. We don't, but we reject it. And when we reject knowledge, uh, we, we, what happens is, is there's destruction is the result. He says, I rejected you from the, uh, he, said, he ended up saying, I rejected you from being a priest. And since you have forgotten the law of God, I will also forget your children. Big, big verse that's uh, a little bit of context there is helpful that the word of God is so vital to you and me and to our land. The word of God is vital to my family. The word of God is vital to your family. And this is why we're talking about uh, going to school. Because we got to go to school to get some knowledge. Right? Boys go to Mars to get more candy bars, and girls go to Jupiter to get, um, you know, all right, never mind. That's one of those school things, you know, you'd say, uh, I'm rubber, your glue, talk to the, I don't know, all right, we're, let's go to school. Um, you know, it's funny, uh, all right, let's keep going here. <laughs> Uh, textbook. So we, we t- hit this. John chapter 17, verse 17. It's this. Sanctify them by your, by your truth. This is a prayer that Jesus prayed. He says, your word is truth. How many, how many of you believe that God's word is truth? You know what? It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. 
It doesn't matter if you believe it or not, because it's true. Uh, What if someone doesn't believe? Hey, if you don't believe it, does that make it not true? Nope. Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Absolutely not. Verse 4, it says, let God be true and every man a liar. Certainly not. Indeed not. Let God be true and every man a liar. You know what? It doesn't matter if you believe it's true or not. It's the truth. And you know what? God gives us an opportunity to, to testify of what our own heart knows. That, that's what happens. He deals every person. The We're going to look at this here uh, this morning as we get into uh, talking about faith. Um, Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 24, we talked about how uh, this, these words are what we can build our life upon. Talked to, just hit on that last week. The word of God, this is what you can, you can take it to the bank. You can build your life. You can, you can design your relationship with your girlfriend, Jonah. When you get that girlfriend, you can take the word of God right here, and you can build your relationship on how you're supposed to treat her, on what you're supposed to do or not do before marriage, how you're to keep your word. And guess what will happen? You'll have an awesome marriage. You'll have an awesome future. You'll raise an awesome family. The Word of God is what you can build your life on. When you don't know what to to do with business, you know what? Integrity. It's always the right call. Integrity is always what it says. Truth. You want to be on God's side? Walk in the truth. Always the right call. I don't know where that came from. Sometimes Sometimes we just need to have that nudge to... Walk with integrity. All right? All right. Thank you, Lord. So this morning we're talking about this. It's the title of this morning's message. Last week we hit textbook. It's this. Uh, when you go to school, so many times what happens is, is you, that first week of school they talk about turning in your assignments and now they have uh, computers and all that and they have, you know, your email addresses attached. But how many of you remember that the teachers always would tell you you need to put your name on your, on your assignment? How many of you know what I'm talking about? You got to put your name on it. And, and sometimes uh, in the beginning part of school, people would forget to put their name. They'd say, okay, our teachers would have us, I remember, put your name in the upper right-hand corner and the date. And like they'd have us do all this extra stuff, you know, uh, got to do more stuff. Put your name and the date, right, uh, on the paper because that would, uh, that would, that would give her or, or the teacher the ability to classify or to assign credit. How many of you know it's important to assign credit? You know, Jesus said this. He said, will I find faith on the earth? Luke 18, 18, verse 8. I tell you, he he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man, and part of this verse, when he returns, will he find faith on the earth? Or will it be kind of like the lost and found backpack, backpack? Oh, I found a backpack. Whose is this? When you guys got ready for school this year and you were bringing your schools, how many moms got the Sharpie marker out? Any moms here get a Sharpie marker? You wrote the name on the lunchbox, didn't you? You wrote your name on their water bottle. You wrote the name on their folders. You wrote the name on their backpack. You wrote their name on their shoes. You wrote their name on everything that you could write the name on because you wanted to make sure that when they left it somewhere, everybody knew it was Johnny's, right? Well, let me ask you this. When the Son of Man returns... Will he find faith? Will he find faith with you? Will he find faith with you, Chad? Whose faith is it, Chad? Is he going to find faith in your house? In whose house? Who's, 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 who? Whose house? This house? Oh, this house. So we're just going to write this uh, on our backpack. We're just going to write uh, this on, so we're going to have a this house, we're going to have a this house, we're going to have a this house. You know, it's funny, I find people, they have rocks in their front yard, and it says, welcome to the, or established in, it has a, what, whose house? The Hatman's house. The question is, can you answer, will you, can you make that declaration, there will be faith in the Schlegel house. There'll be faith in the Costello house. There'll be faith in the Brajan house. There'll be faith in my house. That's a declaration. That's kind of a big, a big statement. It's not just a big statement. What it is is a personal statement. And you can't, you can't just put your name on what doesn't belong to you. That's what I found. You can't put your name on what doesn't belong to you. 
Maybe you've been there when you're in high school. Maybe uh, it seems like this is something's cool in the lost and found, right? And you're like, man, that would be sweet to have that, you know. But it's got somebody else's name on it. Or you could take it and you could make, you could do like they did on Bonanza and take a, a brand of a cow that had a C and invent a, a you know, make, a, make something that was your own and make a, that brand overlay the other one. So, well, guess what? That's Nate. So I just turned the, the M or the N into an M for Matthew Schlegel instead of Nate Schlegel. I think that's what happens to some of my tools. <laughs> I just promised. No, this is mine. I'm like... No, it has a name. No, it's, it's an M. Okay. Dang. I thought I could have swore that was mine. I only had one chop saw, right? No. It looks just like mine. <laughs> we do this. You can't put your name on what is somebody else's and, and walk with it confidently. Put your name on it. We're talking about faith and putting your name on it. But here's the thing, you and I have to understand how faith comes, how faith works, that, that, that actually I'm not trying to get faith, but that God gave me some faith. And we can't, sometimes we like hold just like, oh, I just need to have them pray. No, no, you need to pray. Like, this is something that what we're talking about today, and we're going to school, but we go to school for, so that when we get out of school, the things that we learn will help us in life. Well, we're here today, we're going to faith school, because what we learn today is going to help us tomorrow and the next day and the next day. All right? And so, is God going to find faith in your house? Well, you better know whose house it is. God's going to find faith in the Schlegel house. Is God God going to find faith in your house? Could you say that with confidently? With confidence, excuse me? Or can you say that confidently? Man, I hope you can. Because that'll be pleasing to the Lord. Yeah. We'll t- look, talk about how. Uh, how, how let's, let's just go to a few, a few uh, verses here. I want to start um, in Romans chapter. Uh, I have Romans 10, Jake. If you'll put up, go all the way to 9 and 10. Because this is super, uh, all the way through verse 17. Uh, I didn't give you that. But if you can start in verse 9 instead of verse 14. So Romans chapter 9. I want to just talk uh, the, the basis or the foundation of where faith finds its roots the faith faith finds its roots where well it comes from the word but where does faith grow where does faith dwell is it up here is it in your mind no no is it in your senses now i can believe because i have i yeah i can believe in this because i put my hands in his in his finger my hand in his hole in his hand in his side and is that faith no so it's not based on what I see. It's not based on what I think. No, it has its foundation in where? In the heart. It says, so Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says this, that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your, in your heart. So faith is of the heart. You can see this. Faith is of the heart. It says with your heart that God raised uh, Jesus from the dead. You'll be saved. The next verse reiterates what was just said in verse 9. It says, for it is with your heart that you believe. So faith is not just, uh, it's, what, it's, it's what you believe. The ability to believe anything comes because you've heard it. And this is why it goes on to say in Romans 10, 17, which is a few verses later, now faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. In between there, it says, how are they going to hear unless... How are they going to believe unless they hear? And then it goes on to say, how beautiful are the feet of those that bring the good news. There are many the people that are simply destroyed because they haven't heard. But they haven't heard. Why haven't they heard? Because the priests aren't carrying the message. Because the message stays inside some four walls of a church. Instead of going with us, you and me, who are bold enough to carry a message, realizing that people are being destroyed because they haven't heard. Amen. It matters the message that you and I carry. It matters that we carry the message. 
So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So faith comes, we know how faith comes, but this is, we're talking about putting your name on it. We're talking about you owning faith this morning. We're talking, we're going to get to how how do I own faith? How do I get faith? Where where does it come from? Where does it dwell? How can I own it? That that I could have it, that I don't have to rely on just Pastor Nate's faith or or my grandma's faith or somebody else's faith, but, but I can approach something and ask in faith and know that it will be done for me. I can, I can uh, face a, a battle and, and I can overcome by faith. Yeah. I can overcome by what I believe. I can, I can believe that, that he always causes me to triumph. Now, thanks be to God who always leads me to victory. I, I can believe that. I can overcome. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 4, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. I can believe that that which is in me is greater than the pressures on the outside of me. You ever been there? Like there's just pressure, 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 pressure. The, that which is in you is greater than the pressure on the outside. You, and so, you know, we're going to talk about this in the weeks to come about releasing faith. But there's a faith shield. That it, if faith's in the heart and we're getting bombarded here, we're going to have to learn how to raise the faith shield. So how do I get what's from here up here. Well, out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth speaks. I'm going to have to learn to begin to agree with the word of God and release faith so that I don't just hold faith, but I release faith. It, it, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I, faith is not just a, a, in only a shield. Faith, when you and I, it's what we believe. We raise it. And it's, 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 it's interesting. It's kind of like if you look at a gladiator, they don't just have a shield. They got the shield and the sword at the same time. When the shield is activated, here, let me tell you this, the sword is unsheathed. When, when, the, when the shield is activated, it's, we're not doing this. It's like this. That, that's how you know faith is activated. Because the sword is unsheathed. Because the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, is in your and my mouth. That's how you know that you are making advancement. That's how you know that you're fighting the fight of faith. Instead of just knowing some things. Sometimes we just know some things. But how many of you know the Bible says that when you know some things and you don't do those things, we're deceived. Why am I not doing it? Because, well, I need to get, I need to get a better grip on it. How many of you ever have had this happen? Um, this, I have three teenage boys, and, uh, and they're a lot like me. In the fact that they like to eat, uh, especially being younger, I used to, you know, number one supersized two double cheeseburgers and a McChicken would be a good starter course before basketball, right? That was just, yeah, that was the way it was. I, I ate my lunch. My mom packed me a lunch. Uh, Evan packed me a lunch. Um, actually, her mom did, but, uh, and then I ate hot lunch. That's just the way we did school, lunch. It's just, so here's the thing that happens at my house. I don't know if you've ever had, some of you are like, what? Are you crazy? Um, man, God made food good, you know? <laughs> I think that that's like, that's like what life is about, is eating good food. I, I, I mean, ever since I was little, the microwave beeps, I stopped crying because I knew my <laughs> bottle was ready. It's just, this is true stories. But here's what happens in our house, and uh, it's probably happened in your house too. Maybe you even said it. Um, I'm starving I'm so hungry. I haven't eaten anything all day. Anybody ever heard of that? Yeah. Okay. And then, um, then you're like, bro, I, I brought you pizza today. Well, except for the pizza, I mean, I'm just so hungry. I, I, it was only one piece. Well, what about the bowl of cereal you had a couple, you know, two hours ago? Well, I'm just saying I'm super hungry. How many of you know when you have done a lot of work or you've done a lot of fighting when you've expre- expended many calories, you often and very simply forget what was deposited just a short time ago. I mean, I, I, this is just, when you're in a, fight, a faith fight, you're going to have to feed more. When you're in a faith fight, when something is attacking what you believe, you're going to have to feed more because you're going to forget that you just ate two slices of Gino's pizza with ranch and stole some of mine. You're going to forget that you just had the third bowl of cereal and left the box on the counter for us to throw it away. You're going to forget. 
You're going to forget the goodness of God and how he spoke to you and someone messaged you and someone texted you and gave you an encouraging word or you read something or you were listening to something on the radio that morning and it was exactly what you needed to hear. But just two hours later, because of what the, the bombardment of all the thoughts and all of the whatever, you forgot that you even were given anything to eat, that anybody even cared enough to stop by Gino's to get you a hot piece of pizza. It wasn't cold. It was right before you got out of practice and you get this fresh hot piece you forgot that somebody even cared and you forget that God cares you forget that he's even there and he's a strength and a help and a very present help in time of need you forget because what do you need to do you need to feed we need when you're in a a faith battle you and I need to feed that's just a side note for us okay but we need to feed because faith comes by what hearing so you need to hear the word again because you're hearing a lot of other words you need to interrupt the, the, the channel. You need to change the channel. You need to set the atmosphere. You know, what I found is it's easy to eat when things are on the counter. You know, when the brownies are left on the counter, how many of you know it's easy to just grab an extra brownie? Sure. Or whatever it is. You know, the thing, it seems like it's always like brownies or cinnamon rolls or something like that that's left on the counter. Like, where's the vegetables? Right? Like, legit. I, I'm being serious. It's like we want to eat healthy, but we don't have things out and available. You and I eat healthy when things are made available and ready and prepared. Isn't that true? It's like planning, uh, preparing, uh, what is that, uh, failing, uh, we're not going to go that way, but failing to plan is planning to fail, all right? All right, let's keep going here. So we know that faith comes, uh, <clears throat> faith is of the heart, we know that it comes by hearing the word. Um, I want to go to, and we know that this, you can, John 17, 17, you can take God's word of the bank. It is the plumb line. It is truth. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, we're going to read this in a couple of different uh, translations. This is ESV. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. It's the conviction of things not seen. How many of you have ever heard? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Maybe that's how you've heard that verse. Now, faith is the substance of the things you're hoping for. It's the evidence of things not seen. I love this translation because it's conviction. How many of you, you know, in a courtroom, for someone to be convicted, there has to be enough evidence. But the thing about faith is, for you to own faith, you're the one that passes the verdict. When the word of God is spoken, it's now faith is the assurance of what you're hoping for. It is the conviction of things not seen. It's a conviction, something you are convicted. You are making the, the, the verdict. You are saying that's true. You're saying that God said this and I believe it. And you've heard people say, well, that's a bunch of junk. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Well, that's what faith is. Faith is that you take God at his word and you make the call that he's faithful. And that he was the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And that his character is who he says he is, not who somebody else said or somebody else's experience. I go back to God's word, and I realize that now faith is the assurance. It's something that I hold because I saw the evidence, because I saw the word, and the Holy Spirit bore witness with my spirit of who God is. And so I take the spirit of God and, I, and what he's spoken to my heart and I look at that evidence and I say, I'm bringing the conviction and I'm saying, the verdict of that is, that's right. That's right. So you might hear, like, her, her, what, what did you say, Mo? That's right. <laughs> You'll hear her saying this over and over uh, from the front row. I hear this because the voice is projected this way. But you'll hear this when I'm teaching. You'll hear it over and over. That's right. That's right. Here's what she's saying. Verdict. 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 It's, it's, it's the nod. It's the nod that, that what God said is true. I, I have to, I have to, it's my nod. You, you listen, if you, don't, if you don't believe that in your heart and confess with Jesus, confess Jesus as Lord to be saved, if you don't, don't worry. You won't be saved. But if you, right next to you, you confess, Jesus says, Lord, you believe in your heart, you're saved. It's like your name, Lamb's Book of Life. It won't have to be blotted out. 
It's, it's personal. We're talking about putting your name on faith to this morning. Your name, your faith, your conviction, your verdict. What is the verdict? Now, faith is the assurance of what's hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen or the conviction of things not seen. Let's go to the uh, Amplified Bible, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Um, this is not the amp classic. This is the Amplified Bible. We'll see if this is, yep, perfect. It says, now faith is the assurance. It's the confirmation. I, 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 there's a confirming. It's the, you heard it, but you had that confirming of your heart that that's right. You heard it, but you had the confirming of your heart. That's right. Where does faith find its residence? The heart. Your head? Nope. Your head can see a lot of things. Your head can reason a lot of things. Your head can feel a lot of things. Your head can hear a lot. But your heart, now faith is, it says the assurance, it's the confirmation where you heard the word of God, but yet your heart said that's right. It's the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for. Be, being the proof of the things we do not see and the conviction of the reality. Look at this. I love how it says this. Faith per- perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So you can't get faith with your phalanges. That's science class, biology, these fingers. You can't get faith because of what you feel, Thomas. Not to doubt, 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 down on Thomas, because we've all been there, haven't we? Where, we? where it doesn't look like there's enough. It doesn't, it doesn't smell like, it doesn't feel like it, it doesn't, like we look into all of our senses. And that's how the enemy likes to work against us. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I love that. Again, it says, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by physical senses. That's worth saying again. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by physical senses. Where does it comprehend? Well, we're going to look at this later on, but in Ephesians, Paul prayed for the the people at, at Ephesus. He said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your heart would be enlightened. So to comprehend, did you know your heart can comprehend? Did you know your heart can see? You know your heart can hear? Let's keep going here. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And it says, Now with faith, without faith, it's impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God first must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It's, faith is vital to pleasing the Lord. Did you know that the Bible talks all over about what pleases him? You know, as a father, it pleases me to see my children blessed. We're going to have to get this one back out. Go back to school on this one. That God wants you blessed. Blessed. More than enough. God wants you to have more than enough. To be a blessing that you have more than enough to give to every good work. That you're not limited in any way to serve the generation that the Lord said, I'm going to put you here for such a time as this. God wants you blessed. We have to believe that. We have to believe it in our heart, and we, have to, we need to start taking Romans 10, 9, and 10 uh, and appropriate salvation. You believe in your heart, and you say with your mouth what Jesus said. Believe in your heart, and you say with your mouth. And make, make some advancements in faith instead of just having faith so personal and so holding it, to, in a sense, personal to ourselves, keeping it to ourselves to where there's no advancement. It's just like the church would retreat and retreat and retreat instead of occupy until the Lord comes. Yeah, Let's keep going here. So <clears throat> we know, again, we, we established this, and there's some, how many of you know, um, whenever you go to school, you don't just like learn two plus two and then move on from that, and you never use that again. It's, it, it always builds on itself, doesn't it? it? Everything builds on itself. So again, we're going back to the build of Matthew, or excuse me, Mark chapter 4. This is so vital. This is, a, this is a foundational truth. Jesus said, if you don't get this, you don't get anything. You won't understand anything. And this is Mark 4, 13 through 15. Then Jesus said to them, do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand any of the parables? 
He said, the farmer sows the word, and some are like seeds along the path, where when the word is sown, as soon as those who hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown. Here's what we're saying. Satan wants the word. You see it from the beginning. Satan wants the word. And the number one way that Satan takes away the word uh, is, for, is getting to us to yield to our senses. This is the number one way Satan takes my word. Well, let's talk about our five senses. We're going to school here. We got uh, uh, taste, okay? We got hearing, smell, touch. What else is there? Sight. So all of those things he'll appeal to. What did you hear? Did you hear what they said? Did you hear how much money's in the account? Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you see how they looked at you? Did you see how they didn't look at you? Did you see uh, what the doctor, uh, did you see that? Did you see what you saw on Google? Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? Well, you could go all the way through when I touched it and, and I can, I can, I can, when I touch, I feel, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. That's great. It doesn't feel right. Okay, so there's a problem if it doesn't feel right. But what are you going to do with the problem? Yeah. You, the faith has, so I'm not saying that we just put our head in the sand and don't use any of our senses that the Lord has given to us. I'm saying that there's something that's greater than our senses. We're going to we're gonna get to the word here and you're going to see this. That this is how we're to live our lives. You look in the garden, just to re, we're not going there, but you can just go back and you can jog back. When, when Satan came for the word that God spoke to Adam and Eve to not, to not eat from this tree, he said, did God say? And he said, look at this tree. And when Adam saw the tree and he looked at the tree and he touched the tree and he saw and he said, looks like it's good. It's good to eat. I mean, how many of you know, you, I think he probably smelled the apple. How many of you know that sin is enticing? Yeah. You know, you could smell it. I think this is going to be good. It's going to, it didn't taste like it smelled. There was something else there that we, that the senses couldn't perceive. Now, you've heard this scripture before, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Now we walk by, somebody finish it, and not by Okay, let's talk. Let's let's bring this scripture into context. What is he talking about? What is the context of what? Because this is very accurate. We walk by faith and not by sight. It really is a standalone uh, scripture, and you can use it in that way because what it says is the context from which it's taken. That you and I are to walk by faith, but not and not by sight. Absolutely, our senses are not to direct our lives. What what the faith that I own? It's not based on what I see. My, the name, my, my name on my faith is not based on what I see, feel, hear, or, or can touch. It's based on what the Lord has spoken and what, on his word. And I've made the uh, assessment or the verdict, rather, in the heart. And the conviction is that that is true. God be true and every man a liar. Yeah. Romans chapter 3, verse 4. Yeah. But when you look here, it says, for we live by faith, not by sight. Let's take a moment and let's just look at verse 1 through 10. And what he's talking about here is eternity. He's talking about eternity. That there's a place right now, this body right now, it's groaning for the body that is to come. It wants so bad to, to be clothed by, uh, by that which is not just mere mortal. It wants so bad. There's, a, there's an awareness. This is what's really interesting. That, that, that 99.9% of people, whether they're Christian or not, they know something on the inside. And even if they don't admit to it, they know that there's an afterlife. They know that there's somewhere that they're going to be. They know that it's not the end. They know that there's inside of them. They know because it's The Bible says that eternity has been written in our hearts. So either that's true and God wrote that or the people that say, I don't believe that, they're lying. So is God true and that man a liar? Let me say it this way. Whether it's 100% of people know that there is an after. And so here Paul's talking to the church of Corinth and he's saying this. And let's just read it. It says, for we, for we know that if the tent, this, this body, that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God. There's another tent. 
He said, we know this. We know, we know that there's, a, there's another home. We know that there's another building. We know that I'm going to exist somewhere else. We know that, is what he says. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, in this body we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If we indeed, by putting it on, we may not be found, or we may not, uh, be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan and we're burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed. So we're, he's just saying this, like we're, we're existing here, but we, we so long and we're very aware that there's an existence there. And, and we don't want to just go there and not be who we're to be, at, we're to, but we're to put on what doesn't die. We, we so long for that, okay? And I'm trying to just give a little more context for somebody that maybe doesn't understand what I'm reading here. Um, so that, I'm picking up on the bottom of verse 4, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Again, eternity written in our hearts. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So there's, there's a guarantee. You just know. How do you know? How do you know that there's life after death? Somebody, like, how do you know? There, there's, 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 a, there's a knowing on the inside. Not just, a, not, not, let alone talking about the spirit given to a born again as a guarantee for tomorrow. But we're talking about on the inside. There's a guarantee on the inside that you know. You, you know. Let's keep going here. It says, so, so we are, all, are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, or are away, we make it our aim to please him. Here's what he's saying. We just live aware of what we can't see. This is what he's saying. This is all this is about. We walk by faith, not by sight. He said, he said guys, we need to start living more aware of what we can't see. Because we believe in what we can't see. We know that there's something that we can't see. We know that there's, we're going to put on, this body's going to put on something else. We need to live more aware of what we don't see. We need to walk by faith, not by sight. He said you can't walk, but we, we're not to navigate our lives based on physical senses. We're to navigate our lives based on what we believe, by faith, from the inner man, what we know. He says, and when we do that, we'll, we'll, we'll be making the right choices. And we'll be making choices in view of him. Look, the next verse says, for we must all appear at, before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due, what he has done uh, in the body, whether good or evil. The, the judgment seat of Christ. Not like, you're, you're, you're going to, did you win the race? Like everyone, though they ran the race, didn't get the gold. The reward seat of Christ. How do you and I walk by, how do we, you and I receive a reward from Christ? We live not just based on what we see out here, but what he speaks here. And we judge him righteous. We judge his word righteous. He said this, and I'm going to hold on to this. That's my conviction. That's my verdict. I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to raise that shield of faith, and I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. I'm going to put the word of God in my mouth. Let's keep going here. Now, we're, we got three more verses. It would take me 15 minutes to finish on these. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, 5 through 6. We know this. We've heard this. We've said this. We quote this. We have tattoos of this. Trust in the Lord. Where? With all of your... And lean not to hear. So what there's a... Both... We said, walk by faith and not by sight. So we talked about, your heart. can you see your heart? We're not talking about the blood pumper. We're talking about the inner man. He said, he, he, we, we're talking about how there's things you don't see and there's things that you see. He says, we are to walk by what we don't see, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Here is the same verse. Hey, guys, we're to trust in the Lord with what we don't see and not lean to what we do see. This is... Lean not to your understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him or submit to him. In every way, check with him, and he will make your path straight. Jake, will you throw up that verse, uh, not the verse, but the slide that you made? In all your ways, acknowledge him. Check 
with the heart. Check with the heart. Check with the inner ear. This is why it's so important for us to, to, to agree with God that I, my children know my voice and the strangers they do not follow. I know the voice of God because I'm a child of God. Well, I just don't know if I can hear. Don't lie to yourself. Quit lying to yourself. You know. You know your heart because this is where he speaks to you. You can lie, but your heart knows. You know when you're violating things. You know. You know about eternity. Look, talking about the inner ear of the heart. Your ear hears a whole lot more than you and I say. Sometimes it's nice to just say, I don't hear from the Lord, because then I'm not as accountable. I'm accountable for what I know, for what I've heard, and where God speaks. And guess what? If I'll learn to yield here and not to these eyes, guess what? There's business decisions, and there's 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 divine appointments that you just feel like I, in your heart you heard you got a sense more than a sentence you heard, hey I, th- I i need to wait here or, or or hey we're not supposed to go ahead and buy that car you ever get that and you go ahead and just violate it anyway because it look at the price tag everyone else has one that's the one i've been trying and pushing and and, and you're like uh that's not right and and you know that's not right it's the same thing that happens. Do you ever have, maybe you've ever been in a fight with your, uh, your family, your friends, your wife, whatever it might be, and something happens and you know, like, quit. You keep getting quit, quit, quit. And then something happens. Yeah. And then you can blame the devil or you can actually just blame. Yeah. It's happened to us a number of years ago. Uh, couple, three houses ago now, uh, down on Lancaster, and we were in an argument coming from church, and I was upset with her, and, and I was riding her butt on the car. We were in two different vehicles. Okay, y'all don't look all holy. <laughs> Come on. So I'm like, let's go. Come on. Get home. Well, going home, I thought, by the time I got to my driveway... I'm just, I was really upset driving, flying down the driveway, and she's, I'm pushing her. I'm like right on her butt. But she kind of brake checked me a couple times, you know. Um, so it's good to fight with someone that can fight back sometimes, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, and so we're driving down the driveway, and, and I'm like, you know what? This is stupid. I can't believe I allowed this to go on from church. This is like seven minutes of me just being angry. And the whole time it's like, quit. And it's just like, hmm. Quit, you know. I'll tell her when I when I get home, you know. And and by the time I get all, coming around the driveway and coming down, I didn't quit, didn't quit, didn't let off, didn't let off. I thought you need to quit. Well, I'm still up on her, and we're pulling into the house. And I thought I can't really slow down now. I mean, I'm slowing down, but I'll hit the garage door for her. So I hit the garage door for her. Well, she decided to hit the garage door at the same time. You know, she didn't look at the garage door. I had already hit the garage door, and it had opened. So she hit the garage door, and she closed it on the top of her uh, SUV and decided to rip the garage door off all the way into the house. Oh, I was mad. You know why I was mad? Because I knew. And there's times that we're allowing, and we're blaming God, we're blaming the devil, we're blaming things, and you know, and you know the Lord's been dealing with you, and you know the Lord told you not to buy that, and you know the Lord said that's not the girl, and you know that, that the Lord was dealing with your heart, but you were unwilling to yield, yeah. unwilling to yield. See, in order to walk by faith, we have to first be willing to yield. I can't believe until I first receive. I have to receive this word that God's speaking to me, this is true. I have to receive it. So yielding is is so key to walking by faith. To to again trust in the Lord. Here's the cool thing: if the Lord tells me to, I'm to walk by faith and not by sight, it must mean I can. If the Lord tells me again, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him here, and He'll direct your path. Then that must mean I can. It must mean I can. It mean must mean that every decision I come to, He would love to guide me. By faith. 
We're to walk by faith. We're to live by faith. We're to make our way through life by faith, being very aware of what we can't see, just like of heaven. We're going to close with this, with this, this passage here, or these points here. Uh, and we're going, to, we're going to look at Luke chapter 24. This is after Jesus died. So there, there, there is a time when Jesus, the Word, was made flesh, according to John chapter 1. And it, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus was the Word. And he dwelt with the disciples. But when he was about to go away, he said, there's going to be one that I'm going to give you, the Holy Spirit. This is John 14 and John 16. The Holy Spirit. And what he's going to bring to you is the Word. As the word was with you, the word will now be with you. Okay? So now here we are after, after Jesus dies on the cross and he's now risen from the dead. But the disciples are still messed up because of what they thought, because of what they saw, because of what they heard, because of what they didn't see. Yeah. Okay? And it says, now behold, two of them were traveling. This is Luke 24, 13. Uh, we're going to read most of the chapter here. Now behold, two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was a seven-mile journey from Jerusalem. They talked together of all the things which had happened, all that they saw, all that they heard, all that they felt. So it was while they were conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But... Verse 16, this is something that needs to be highlighted, underlined, circled. But their eyes, their eyes, these eyes could not recognize or restrain, so they did not know Jesus. So imagine you and your buddy are walking down the road, and all of a sudden your third buddy, who you have spent so much time with, joins in with you, but you can't recognize him. So the Lord had made it to where their eyes or their comprehension or their senses were blurred or were, did, not, did not feel, they were numb. The senses were numb. Their ears didn't hear Jesus. You know how when you go, hey, man, what's up? Hey, hey, this is Nate. Yeah, you didn't need to tell me that. You knew it was me because I called you and we spent time together. It wasn't just their eyes. It was how they perceived. This is what this is saying. The way that they perceive was no longer available to them for who was down with them. Okay. Because what Christ is doing here, he's, he's showing them that you're not going to get to walk the way you once walked. There's a different walk. There's a different way. There's a different approach that the people of God, because Jesus isn't going to dwell with us anymore. Yeah. In person, bodily form. Yeah. In sense, feel, see, touch. Right. Uh, Thomases can't, they're, they're, even though there's going to be a bunch more Thomases, there's not going to be a hand to stick your finger in. That's right. So there's a different way. And so the, their, their, their senses are blinded, okay? Uh, and this, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just going to mention a few verses here, and we're going to continue uh, on verse 17. But what we can see in, in Kings, when, when Elijah was struggling, he, he, he needed to meet with God, and there was an earthquake, and there was a fire, and there was great wind. But God wasn't in any of those things. He was in the still, small voice. He was in the whisper. This is where God still is. He's in the still, small voice. The, he, he whispers to your heart. He says, you'll hear a voice, and he'll say, it'll, it'll be like from behind. You'll look and go, where did that come from? The Bible says that you'll hear a voice calling from behind, saying, this is the way, walk in it. You ever hear a voice? You ever hear something, and you're like, where did that come from? You, you can't recognize it, but it's actually coming from within you. Walk in this voice, walk, or walk in this way. This is how the Lord leads. He leads his spirit as children of God by the spirit of God, which right here. We're now made alive to Christ. This right here. So he says that, um, in Luke 24, 17, he said to them, what, what are you guys talking about? What's the conversation you're having with one another? Uh, why, why are you walking so sad? Then one, one whose name was uh, Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only, one, uh, only stranger in Jerusalem? Have you not known the things that happened here these last few days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, oh, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet. He was mighty indeed in word before God and all other people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping... But we were hoping... That it, that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things have happened. Yes, we know that certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early 
uh, astonished us. You know, they're emotional and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, they like to talk. But we didn't find what they said. And that's what it said there. We, we, verse 23, when they did not find his body, they came and said, we've seen a vision of angels. Yeah, they're just those real spiritual people. It's like, tired of hearing from my, my, my wife always talking about spiritual things. Like, my mom always talking about spiritual things. Like, I didn't see it. It's not true to me. Did I see it? I mean, did you not hear about what's going on? Look at this. Someone, oh, I saw Jesus and angels. whoop de doo da I mean, how many times are, are, can we receive Jesus talking? We're in a conversation with Jesus, and we're, we're just harping on all that's not. And you know what? The, the, as they continued to harp on all that's not, did light come? No. Nope. When you and I stick around what, what's not, guess what? Light doesn't come. And he keeps on going. And when they did not find a body, they came and said, we saw a vision. It was verse 24. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb, and they found it just as the woman had said. But they didn't see him either. Then he said to them, oh, you foolish ones. Now Jesus speaks up. Oh, you foolish ones. And slow of what? Slow of heart to believe. In all that the prophets had spoken. Ought not the Christ have suffered these things and did? Uh, and to enter into his glory. And, the begin and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would go further. But they constrained him and said, Oh, abide with us, for it's about evening, and the day is about over. So he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. It says, then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. All of a sudden, after all that had been going on, they didn't recognize, they didn't recognize. They heard the scriptures fully. They, 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 they're like, oh, this is, this is so wonderful. This is so wonderful. It's so wonderful to hear what you're saying. Would you stay here? Because we were hopeless, but... Can you stay and can you join the night with us? Well, we just want to keep talking to you. There's just something like I was in a pit, but now I'm not in a pit. And I just I, I want to hang out with you. I want to hang with you. And he said, okay, let's do dinner. And you got any bread? And they break the bread. And as he breaks the bread, they, go, they, they recognize the Lord opens their eyes, their natural sight. And they go, Jesus was with us this whole time? And then Jesus disappears. And then they begin to talk with one another. And this talking with one another is so key because this is how you and I, this is faith school. Pay attention to your heart. This is faith school. When your heart says, those aren't the friends, pay attention to your heart. When your heart says, stop. When your heart says, don't do that. When your heart says, well, what if they're going to think? And what about this? And what about that? I need an explanation. I need to tell them what it thinks and feels and see and da, 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 da. No, pay attention to your heart. He says that next verse. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked to us on the road? And while he did what? Open the scriptures to us. You want to hear? You want the ear of your heart? To be illuminated, you want to, in a sense, turn the volume up, open some scripture. And what's happen when you're in a place of adversity, when you're in a faith battle, a fight, when you're in a fight, when you're looking for, uh, you're in a place of decision, and you don't know, and you're struggling, should I do this, should I not do this, should I... Should I press charges? Should I not press charges? Should I, should I go to take them to court? And uh, what, what should I do, Lord? This is turmoil on every side, this mind. Should I buy it or should I not buy it? Should I not? Here's the deal. Before you move, trust in the Lord with your heart. So get, and, and let me just say it this way. Get, get the light out. Psalms 119, 105, and 130. The light word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. Like it talks about how his word shines ahead and where I'm going. Get the word out. Get that word out. And it'll be like that burning of the heart. It'll, it'll let this become... It's fuel. 
Think of your heart. Did our hearts not burn within us? There's a fire, but that those words are fuel. It, it'll illuminate you. It'll, it'll be brighter. It'll be stronger. It'll be hotter. Talking about walking by faith, not by sight. Making the move and being able to make a move based on conviction, not based on every bit of pressure on the outside. Go sit with the word. Put some fuel. Put the word in. Open the word. And what will happen is the, the, the voice of God will get louder or it'll get stronger. It'll get brighter. It'll get hotter. It'll even into the place where maybe you've been in a place where you're calloused. You know, the Bible tells us that we can get to a place where we just ignore and we ignore and we ignore and we get to the place where we're calloused. You know, there's some things that are hot enough to even penetrate the callous. I'll tell you, if, you put, if, you, you, if you've been welding before, it doesn't matter if it's red hot. It can turn black, and you can grab it and you, even through the gloves. You thought you had some handle hot dishes. Oh, I, don't worry, La Fiesta, I got that plate. No, I'm good, I'm good. I know hot, yeah, I got you. But there's some things, and the Word of God, the Word of God will burn right through the callous. And you'll, you'll know, and you'll know, and you'll know how to live and how to make your way and how to make that decision. And you can trust in the Lord with all of your heart and in all your ways acknowledge Him and allow Him to direct your path. And here's what I say this. If you're going to walk by faith and not by sight, you're going to have to trust what you hear in your heart is not only right, but it's for your good. That's not the girl. What do you mean? She looked like the girl on Snap. That's not the one. Huh. Fooled me. There's nobody else that's like her. Really? Because the Lord said that's not her. And you know in your heart. So what are you going to do? You're going to press on? You're going to violate that? You're going to continue to make your way without yielding to? This is faith school. So that you can go outside these walls and when the Lord says, hey, Right here in your heart, you get the burning to go talk to that person. Go encourage him. I don't know what to say. Did he tell you all the what to say? No, he said, let me direct. Right, left, right. It's like, it's like that dance. It's like, I don't know all the next steps. I just know that he's moving. He wants to move you and me. And if we're willing to yield, we'll find our place in the right time, place. We'll find ourselves in the right place at the right time, doing the right things, with the right people. How? By walking by faith and not by sight. By walking by faith and not by sight. You know what else I'll find? I'll find that there's peace. I'll find that there's joy. So here's what we're gonna we're gonna do. Here's how to walk by faith, not by sight. Today, as we go, two things. If I'm struggling, if I'm struggling to make a decision. I'm going to pull out Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. You're struggling. You're in a time of decision. Listen here. The Word of God, this is, this, you put this one, put this one in you. Put this one, put this one in you. This is like the times table right here, times table. For the Word of God is living and it's active. It, it applies right now. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and is the discerning and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It's able to, de- is that just me or is that me? The word of God is able to separate even where the, 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 it talks about the joints and the marrow. Science doesn't know where the bo- bone and the marrow begins. The, it, it's a gradient. In other words, it goes from bone all the way to the inner marrow and it's just like softer and softer and softer until it gets harder, 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 harder. The outer layer. Well, you are a spirit being. You have a soul and you live in a body, yet you can't really divide the three. But the Word of God can. The Word of God can divide between just here, the soul, and your spirit. And this is how He leads you. He leads you through the Word, and He'll be able to say, No, that's not that. That's that. Yeah, that's just that. That's pizza. Last night's pizza. Pizza dream, whatever. What do you. All right. So, Hebrew, get that out and put that before you. And you say, Lord, you said that you would be able to show me between here and here. I'm trusting you. So you, because here's what happens. When I pray the word, 
I'm shining light on my course ahead. And then we're going to get out Ephesians chapter 1, and we're going to pick it up right here. Ephesians 1, 16 through 22. And you pray this over yourself. When I, when I pray the word, if thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, how many of you know when I pray the word, it's like taking the flashlight for where I'm going? So this is one of the most powerful things you can do for your walk of faith, for the fight of faith. Don't just read the word, pray the word. Pray the word over your children. Pray the word over their past. Shine the light ahead of them. Pray the word over your days, over your business, over your direction. You need vision. You need help. You need hope. You need whatever it might be. You pray the word, and you shine some light upon your path. And we pray, I do not see, just Ephesians chapter 1, 16 through 22. I, I'm going to pray this over us as we close this morning. It says, it says this, I don't cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would give unto you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. That you would have the eyes of your heart enlightened and that you would know the hope to which you've been called that you would know the riches of his glorious inheritance that's laid up for you, his saints, that you'd know how immeasurable the greatness of his power is toward you who believe. This power that was the same power that worked in Christ when God raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. He seated him far above, and he seated you far above all authority, all power and dominion in every name that's named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he's put all things under your feet and gave him as a head over all things to the church. As I was reading that, praying that, this is, I saw this in my heart. There's decisions that are being made because something is standing over you. And that's the wrong decision. You get this out. You're standing over it. There's fear attached to a decision, and that's not the right decision. You need to stand over it. You need to get this out, and you need to put this in you, and you need to make a verdict that, no, wait a minute, God, you put me above. And so there's something been prophesying to your demise, and so you've got to yield to this because of fear. You need, to, you need to check here, and you need to see yourself from being over, not under, and you'll make the right call. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that you lead your children by faith, that we're not limited just to what we see, that there is available to us, oh, things that we can't see. I thank you just for an awareness, a, a reality uh, of what's available to us that is by your spirit, by faith. That faith would be able to uh, pull or uh, receive uh, that which we couldn't see. That we would call those things forth that be not as though they are because you're calling for them. Lord, we thank you that we have ears that hear. Our heart hears. We know your voice. And we just make, a, a, by faith, a declaration. Lord, when you speak, our conviction, our verdict is... That's right. That's right. And that's the way I will walk. That's the way my family will walk. We'll walk by faith. Your word, faith given to me, is the authority by which we navigate our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. You know, man, I'll tell you, in this day and age when there's a lot of things on, on the internet, there's a lot of things everywhere, you don't know what to believe, you don't know what to blah, 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 blah. You know what you can always check? Where, where can you always check? Not sno snoops or snopes or that was a thing in the past. Not Google. You can check your heart. That's where you can always check. You know what a lot, of, a lot of the times? He's not talking about any of it. You'll find that he's like, yeah, leave that alone is what you'll get. You won't get, oh, yep, let me take you to here and here and to here. You'll just hear distraction. 
and you just know I'll lead you. You'll know what you need to know. You, you, I, I'll be in the place that I'm supposed to be. And just let the Lord lead you as you go out beyond these four walls. Let the Lord lead you in conversation. Let the Lord lead you as you, as you spend your dollars. Let the Lord lead you in relationships and business and, and so on and so forth. Amen? Amen. Um, it's 12 o'clock today. Praise the Lord. We got out on time. But before we dismiss, um, if you don't know Jesus, this is, the Bible says you believe in your heart. We went over this today. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you would be saved. This is something that is so simple, that God made it so simple for us, every person. But if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you know, you got to get right with the Lord. I mean, I see there's plenty of people here, a good chance that someone needs to give their life to Jesus today. If that's you, we can stand this morning. I guess I could have done that. If that's you this morning and um, you got to give your life to Jesus, this is not an em- emotional move. Can I tell you repentance is not an emotional move? Can I tell you that just it's just a response of your heart that I know that that's right. I know that I need to make a move. And so sometimes, um, sometimes it's, it's, it's good to not move people emotionally to get them to move because what I'm appealing to then is your senses instead of your heart. Sometimes the best thing for us to do is to just kill the music, kill the lights, and just let it be, and say, can you acknowledge your heart even when you don't feel like it? And so if that's you this morning, without all the hoorah, without all the stuff that the Lord's speaking to your heart, you need to get right with Him. I'm going to ask you to lift your hand. I'm going to ask you to lift your hand, and I'll pray with you to receive Christ. So if that's you, on the count of three, I'll just ask you to lift your hand. One, two, three. Lift your hand loud and strong and clear and bold. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, conversation just like this. Hey, conversation just like this. Just not, you don't have to have piano in the background. You don't have to have uh, some tunes, you know, put the music on in your car. You can be talking with your coworker over a bologna sandwich at lunch. And you can ask them about Jesus. You can ask them about their relationship with their wife and their family. And you can yield too. Just that we're talking that, you know, salvation is for every area of our lives. And that you and I are called to bring healing. And you can yield to what the, the unction on the inside and you can give them God's word and it'll be a lamp unto their feet and it'll be a light even unto their path. Families will be restored. What'll happen is, in what we read in Hosea, will begin to cease. It'll cease on your job because the word of God is present. Lying, manipulation, murder, deception, adultery, all these kind of things, just ending because you're willing to carry the word. Amen. Let me bless you as you go. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these people called uh, together, but Father, called to go out. We thank you that we would, uh, we hear your voice. We know your voice. And we, we say we are preachers of Jesus, every one of us, everywhere we go and every day. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you as you go.